Hi everyone, I'm Tim and in this short video I'm gonna tell you a few words about the library I've been working on in my spare time for last two years. It's called N-Waves and essentially it's the .NET library for a digital signal processing or DSP in short. This library provides means for working with one-dimensional signals and since one of the most prominent examples of one-day signals are audio signals such as speech, music, various kinds of noise, etc. you'll find here a lot of techniques aimed specifically at audio processing. So, when we are talking about DSP, we usually mention three broad tasks – signal interpretation or analysis, signal modification and signal generation or synthesis. As for signal interpretation task, first of all, in this library we have a special transformer classes responsible for doing various digital transforms, such as fast Fourier transform, short time Fourier transform, including spectrograms, fast wavelet transform, discrete cosine transform and some others. All these classes have in common two methods – direct and inverse for direct and inverse transformations respectively. In order to carry out particular transformation you create the object of the corresponding transformer and use it. And what's important you can and for efficient processing you should reuse the same transformer in multiple computations. I'm also gonna say it right away I'm covering only the very basic things here and surely there are quite a lot of nuances related to almost every aspect of N-Waves library and you can read about them more in detail in the wiki documentation for this project. The second cool thing about the signal interpretation task in N-Waves is that we have some ready-to-use subclasses of the base feature extractor class responsible for computing the audio features. Since nowadays Mel Frequency Capsule Coefficients MFCC, is de facto the standard algorithm for audio feature extraction, in N-Waves you'll find quite expectedly the MFCC extractor class. But not only this, you can also compute such well-known features as PNCC, PLP, LPC, LPC, PCC and some others as well. Many extracting algorithms are based on applying filter banks of particular shapes. In N-Waves you can create and specify them, in fact with any shape you want, but you will also find here some predefined filter banks – triangular, rectangular, trapezoidal, overlapping, non-overlapping, for bark scale, male scale, gamma tone, filters, etc. There are also extractors for spectral and time domain descriptors introduced in the field of musical information retrieval and defined by MPEG-7 standard, such as uh, spectral centroid, flatness, roll-off, entropy, harmonic spectral features, etc. You can specify any subset of these descriptors for computation. And finally, it's possible to track the pitch of a sound, and several well-known time domain and frequency domain methods for pitch detection or estimation are implemented in N-Waves. All extractors are highly customizable and for configuring them you use the special options objects. The cool thing is that they can be serialized and deserialized in the form of a JSON file. So it's very convenient for saving your particular configuration for later repeated calculations. Okay, so now what about the part of the library dealing with the signal modification task? The digital filtering plays the central part here, thus N-Waves provides a lot of functionality related to filter design and filtering. iFilter and iOnline filter interfaces define the contract for offline and online filters respectively. The term offline means that the filtering routine accepts entire signal, processes it and returns the entire signal as well. Online filters, on the other hand, allow processing sample after sample or chunk after chunk, returning each new sample or chunk immediately. Online filters maintain some state under the hood and this state can be reset. IIR and FIR filters have their own classes in N-Waves, IIR filter and FIR filter respectively. These classes are used only for filtering. Everything related to filter design and analysis is concentrated in a special tra transfer function class. Any transfer function object can be constructed from numerator and denominator coefficients or, or from uh, complex zeros and poles. Then you can obtain other useful characteristics such as complex frequency response, impulse response, group delay and phase delay. There are two ways uh, to construct filters. Uh, specify transfer function object and specify filter coefficients as arrays. There is an important difference between the two approaches and you can read about it in the documentation. Next, FIR filters can be designed using three well-known techniques – frequency sampling, window sync method and Parks-McLellan algorithm. Such uh, IIR filters as Butterworth, Chebyshev, Elliptic and Bessel filters are designed by the same procedure. First, compute analog poles uh, of the prototype low-pass filter, 
Second, do bilinear transform to obtain Z domain poles from analog poles. And third, normalize frequency response. Each of these filters is contained within its own namespace, and there's a class for every band form low pass, high pass, band pass, and band stop. FIR filters may have pretty long kernels, which furthermore may be designed in some external tools like MATLAB or SciPy, for example. And it's not a problem if you're more comfortable with designing filters in your favorite environment. Just save the filter coefficients there in CSV file, and the transfer function class provides methods for reading and writing filter coefficients from and to CSV files. And once again, you can filter signals online and offline. In online filtering, you just process data periodically, sample after sample or chunk after chunk. And depending on the particular audio technology you will work with, there will be some way to obtain these currently playing samples for processing. The offline filtering can be carried out one of the following ways. Process sample in a loop, directly apply a difference equation, and overlap add or overlap safe block convolution. The second parameter in the corresponding method apply to is of type enum filtering method that defines such constants as auto, difference equation, overlap add and overlap safe. By default the mode is set to auto, so n waves will decide what method to use depending on the filter type and kernel size. And most of the time there is no need to tweak this parameter. Rules are simple, with auto mode all IIR filters and those FIR filters that have kernel size less than 64 always call process sample in a loop. FIR filters with kernel size starting from 64 samples switch to overlap safe mode because it will, uh, because it will be faster. Uh, in n waves, some linear and non-linear filters are already created for you, such as one-pole low-pass and high-pass filters, the entire family of bi-quad filters, moving average and savitsky galay filter, median filter, pre-emphasis and de-emphasis filters, com fit-forward and feedback filters. Also, in n waves you'll find implementation of adaptive filters. There are several classes based on variations of a least mean square algorithm and recursively square algorithm for adaptive computing of FIR filter weights. The process method is slightly different here. It expects not only the input signal, but also the desired signal for adapting. So, by this moment we had talked about the digital filtering. Uh, the digital filtering. Uh, however, signal modification implies not only filtering. With N waves, you can also do other operations of signals such as convolution, cross correlation, and block convolution, resampling, time stretching, which is really cool stuff, and various well known audio effects such as wah wah, phaser, flanger, vibrato, pitch shifter, and others. First, let's say a couple of words about block convolvers. You can choose between overlap add block convolver and overlap safe block convolver. Uh, both of these classes implement iFilter and iOnline filter interfaces. Hence, they can be used as filters in offline and online processing. Note that the output of block convolvers will always be late by the number of samples returned by the property named hop size. Time stretching or time scale modification. Four well-known TSM algorithms are implemented. Each one is reflected in TSM algorithm enum. Phase vocoder, phase vocoder with identity phase locking, WSOLA, uh, i.e. waveform similarity overlap add, pole stretch algorithm. In general, phase vocoder with phase locking produces best results, so it's used by default in time stretching operations. WSOLA is usually good for speech signals, and pulse stretch is different. It produces interesting sounds for large stretch factors like 10x and more. Uh, each algorithm is coded in separate class implementing on only offline iFilter interface. Parameters FFT size and hop size can be adjusted, but the general recommendation is to set relatively small hop lengths, corresponding to about 8 to 15 milliseconds, while size of FFT must be at least 6 or 7 times longer. Resampling. For simple decimation, interpolation, up-down resampling, use corresponding methods and they will work faster. The method named simply resample carries out the band-limited resampling, which is universal and will work for any sampling rate ratios. All methods use anti-aliasing low-pass filtering under the hood. By default, the low-pass filter is designed automatically inside the routines of order 101, but you can specify your own anti-aliasing filter as the last parameter. Now, what about the audio effects? Audio effects are special filters used, uh, used extensively in speech and music processing. Each effect inherits from abstract class audio effect. This class implements iFilter and iOnline filter interfaces and adds two properties from interface iMixable, wet and dry. 
These are the conventional uh, mixing parameters, and usually their sum is equal to 1, however in N-Ways there is no such, uh, no such strict contract. By default wet is equal to 1 and dry is equal to 0. The general audio effect workflow is similar to any other filtering. Parameters can be tweaked at any time during online processing, and many of them are based on LFOs, low frequency oscillators, and you can set your own LFO anytime or pass it as a constructor parameter. Okay. And so we have considered briefly the features of N waves related to the signal modification task. And finally, let's say a couple of words about the signal generation. The part related to this task is so far the least elaborated one in N waves, uh, but anyway, we have a special uh, signal builder classes here, named after the pattern used for their implementation. Um, the purpose of these classes is generating signals of a particular waveform, such as a sinusoidal, triangular, sawtooth, white, pink, and red noises. Builders can create the entire signal of necessary length at once, or they also can act as the real-time data generators, i.e. they can be used in online signal processing. Okay, so um, now I guess I've said everything I wanted to say about this library, I mean in one introductory video, and once again, uh, for more details, refer to the documentation, it explains things deeper and contains more usage examples. If you got interested in this project, start the repo on GitHub, and good luck and enjoy!